Hello and welcome back to the Rugged Rockhound. Today I'm going to be putting some minerals in some muriatic acid. Yes, it's fun to see things dissolve or make parts of it disappear. So what we're going to do is I've got several different specimens that I'm going to put into a muriatic bath to see what happens to them. Now, some of them I've already done before, some of them I already know what's going to happen. Others I've never put in a muriatic bath, but I can kind of guess what's going to happen. So, here's just a quick look at the specimens for today. And we have smoky quartz, some pink petrified wood from Nevada, a couple of those limonite cubes that I found, you know, several weeks back some of the red horn coral fossil, which I talked about, which I've recently been to. Down here we've got some trilobite fossils from De uh, out by Delta. And then we've got some geode specimens from out by Dugway. So I'm gonna, oh, sorry, almost forgot. <laughs> obsidian, we've got some obsidian as well. And this obsidian is actually also from out in that area. It's out by Topaz Mountain. All of these specimens I'm going to be putting into the muriatic bath. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of those specimens before I start doing any cleaning of any kind. Take a look. Alrighty, now that you've seen each of those specimens up close, so you've got a good look at what they look like now, we're going to start by cleaning it off with water and some brushes. Mostly because I just want to get any loose stuff off of them before I put them in the, the acid, otherwise it's not really a fair test. So I'm going to take those specimens I showed you and I'm going to go ahead and wash them off. So I'm going to go get some water and put it in the bucket. some water in here. Okay, we are ready to go ahead and clean some of these off so that we can get them ready for the bath. I've got a few tools here, an old toothbrush and another brush you can get at just about anywhere. Um, I'm gonna take and just kind of scrub any loose stuff off of them. Let's start with the obsidian. Now normally you want to do this in the water, so you're not going to be able to see it from there, but I'm going to be in the water just scrubbing with the brush, taking any of that loose stuff off. There we go, got anything loose off the obsidian, which I didn't think we'd have much, and so on and so forth. Now, when you're washing the smaller ones, I like to use the toothbrush, just because it's harder to hold on to it with a larger or thicker brush. So just use the smaller one. Okay, just finished scrubbing them all off. Let's take a look at where we're at. Okay, so obviously they look better just because they're wet. <laughs> but there they all are all scrubbed off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and quickly show you some close-ups of each of those now that they're washed off so you can see how it's changed. The geodes, of course, had tons of dirt and so that they changed significantly. But let's go ahead and take a look at all of them.
All right, now that you've seen what they look like after I've cleaned them off, let's go ahead and get to the acid part. I got them all set up. They're all in the bucket, ready to go. I'm gonna put some water in, and then there's my bottle of acid. Here we go. Now, it would be best if I had like a basket or a way to suspend these, just to increase the surface area that the acid's in contact with. But, for the purposes of today, this will work just fine. Now, the acid, you wanna dilute it to about one to five, where one part acid, about four, four parts water, somewhere there about. Um, it's something you can play with and work around with just to kind of figure out what concentration of acid works best. Of course, the more acid, the faster the reaction goes, the less, the slower it goes. Uh, with what I'm gonna do here today, it'll probably be about Ooh, three hours that I want to wait to let things get cleaned off by the acid. The amount of time you wait can vary. The longer you wait, of course, the more the acid will react, but the less there is of the acid. Um, if you were doing a large one with lots of pieces that you want to remove a lot of stuff, you might want to wait overnight. But for today, that's all we have. We're going to put a decent amount of acid in. It'll probably only take a few hours. Okay, I've got the cap off. Here's our muriatic acid. Take a quick look here. There you go. People use it to etch concrete. All right, now when you're doing acid and water mixing, always put the water in first and then the acid. If you put the acid in first and then the water, it can splash up and get on you and burn you. So, good idea not to. Also, always do it out in the open because fumes will rise up from this that will contain acidic vapor and if the acidic vapor gets into your lungs it can be damaging so yeah so, I'm gonna go ahead and, add the acid. and the reaction will be pretty quick once I add a fair amount you'll see some uh, bubbling coming up and there you go see them bubbles come up Okay, it has been about ooh, three and a half hours since I put them in the bucket, so it should be long enough for those few little pieces, and we're going to go take a look at them. So let's head on over there. Yeah, my car is here because I was washing it. <laughs> that's my that's my rock hounding vehicle. Um, so let's go over here and take a look. Okay, mostly done. We got a few bubbles still coming up. All right, at this point, it should be pretty safe to be around here and not breathe anything in. Uh, some of you might be going like, oh, you should put a respirator or something on when you poured the acid in. I'm like, well, yeah, I could have if I had any, but um, as long as I'm not breathing, so I just kind of hold my breath while I pour it in and then stay ba and stand back and just walk away from it and stay away from it the whole time the process is going then I'm safe. Now, most of the, most of the acid should have uh, reacted with the things in there and diluted itself. But just to be safe, I'm gonna take some baking soda and dilute it a little bit more, so. Woo! Actually, there's still probably quite a bit of acid in there. Let's put some more in. Okay, maybe I underestimated how much acid I put in there. <laughs> That's all right, we'll get it diluted down and then we'll uh, go ahead and wash it out. All right, at this point it should be nicely diluted. I'm gonna dilute it further by just putting a bunch of water in it and then we got a nice little spot over here we can uh, pour the stuff out. So I'm gonna come over here. and pour it out, and then we will uh, look at the stuff. Make sure to spray them off really good so that they hopefully don't have much acid remaining on them. Enough that it won't hurt anything. Uh, spray them off really good. 
I need a better system for this, but this is what I have right now. All right, they should be nicely cleaned off at this point. Let's go ahead and take them inside and get some uh, closer look at them. Okay, we cleaned them all off and now you've seen what they look like afterward. So what happened, right? So the quartz crystals, the black ones, pretty much didn't change. The uh, limonite cubes, as you can see, didn't really change either. And the petrified wood didn't really change. That's because these are mostly silicas or silicates. Oh, the limonite cubes are iron oxide. But these are all things that don't normally react with the acid. So they they hold up pretty well against it. What does the acid actually do? Hydrochloric acid, which is what muriatic acid is, is very good at dissolving carbonates. It reacts with carbonates. So if the stuff that's on the outside of it is a carbonate, then it will clean it quite nicely. If the thing itself is a carbonate, it'll disappear. As you can see with the uh, fossils, the trilobites are made out of carbonates. And so when you put that in the bucket, they dissolved. <laughs> Goodbye, right? And some of you are probably like, no, you destroyed them. Don't worry, I've got hundreds of them. That's why I was okay with sacrificing a few for science. <laughs> so those disappeared. And then if you look at the obsidian, it had calcite on the outside, which is why a lot of that disappeared as well. So what you're looking at is if what you're trying to get rid of is a carbonate and what you're trying to preserve is not a carbonate, then muriatic acid can be a good way to clean it off. And how much muriatic acid you use might depend on what it is that you're trying to get off versus what it is you're trying to protect. The best stuff to um, use it on is where you're trying to protect something that is a silicate and in particular quartz. So any of your quartzes, so citron, amethyst, smoky quartz, just regular quartz, chalcedony, flint, chert, agate, jasper, whatever, all of those varieties of quartz are a great tool, are great for cleaning off with acid because quartz doesn't break down with acid. Acid is very it does not it doesn't interact with it. So quartz is a great one to use it on if what's coating the quartz is some kind of carbonate. It's also good for other minerals that have carbonates that you want to get off. But be careful. Make sure that what you're getting rid of isn't also a carbonate. As you can see with the red horn coral, some of the red horn coral disappeared. And I actually showed you another picture that was the uh, red horn coral that I did last week, which is I had put in the, the acid bath just to kind of see how much agatization actually happened in it. How much of the original calcite that was the impression of the coral got replaced by the quartz. Chalcedony, basically. You can call it agate if you want. Whatever. <laughs> that is why those things, the red horn coral, you do not want to put in a bath of acid because Part of the beauty when you cut and polish it comes from the calcite as well as the quartz. So you want to keep both of those, which does mean that the outside doesn't look that appealing, but that's okay. The inside's beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed today's little experiment using muriatic acid on a several different things and just seeing how they do.